Diversify a portion of your savings into gold and silver with Birch Gold. If you haven't reached out to Birch Gold to diversify part of your IRA or 401k into a precious metals IRA, do it today. Text POST to 989898 and get a free info kit on protecting your savings with gold. Or just buy gold or silver and have it shipped to your home. Birch Gold has an A-plus rating with the BBB. Countless five-star reviews. Talk to them. Have them help you safeguard your investment. Simply text COAST to 989898 to claim your free, no-obligation info kit on holding gold and silver in a tax-sheltered account. Again, text COAST to 989898 to take the first step in protecting your savings today. Thinking about life insurance? What if you could make one free phone call and learn your best price from nearly a dozen highly rated price competitive companies? Well, that's exactly what happens when you call Select Cord Life. For example, George is 40. He was getting sky-high quotes from other companies because he takes meds to control his blood pressure. But when I shopped around, I found him a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $25 a month. I'm Select Quote Agent Dan Sedano. And believe me, if Select Quote isn't shopping for your life insurance, you're probably paying so much. For your free quote, call 800-519-0447. That's 800-519-0447. 800-519-0447. Or go to collectquote.com. Since 1985, we shop, you save. Get full details on the example policy at collectquote.com. Slash commercial with most of your depending on your health issue and company and other factors. Not available in all states. <laughs> You're listening to Coach to Coast AM. Hey there, I'm Connie Willis. We're talking with M.K. Davis and learning from some of his um, hobby work, I guess, originally. And he just fell in love with it and just learned all sorts of stuff constantly. and takes him from one pathway to the next, to the next, to the next. He's going to be talking to us about giants. He's giving us a little bit of information on how he likes to look up into the sky and do his astro photography. One more thing, N.K., what was your actual path, your your actual job, your money-making job? It was, you were a chemist, is that right? No, I wasn't a chemist, but I worked at a chemical plant. Ah, okay. So I made anhydrous ammonia, uh, pressures, temperatures, flows, all of those things, and heat spots. Well, I was giving you credit to be a chemist. You could have went with it. You could have taken it home. <laughs> well, there's, there's chemistry involved, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the peopling of the Americas. Take us on this journey. Okay, well, the, let's just start with the red-haired giant. Um, people might be wondering, red-haired giants, what are you talking about? But there was actually, uh, uh, in the legends and lore of the Paiutes, uh, they spoke about uh, a war that they fought uh, with a group of people that were giants and they were covered in red hair and that it became so desperate because these giants had been cannibalizing the Paiutes and so they it was it was one of them them or us type things and they gradually kind of brought their numbers down to a smaller amount and then they come out in the lake uh, which no longer exists there it's just, just the lake bed Lake Lohenton in uh, northern Nevada okay and and they they made a dash for it they made a run for it and they beached their boat and they had a boat it was like reed uh, made of reed uh, which was like uh, check the reed you know tied up in bundles, made into a platform. It wasn't a speedboat. And they made their way up into this cave, and the Paiutes gathered there and tried to talk them into coming out and and, uh, and a little bit of diplomacy there, and uh, got no results. And so they, they threw wood up into the cave and set it on fire. And it was uh, uh, allegedly burned them out, burned them to death. Oh. Uh, and that cave eventually became uh, known as Lovelock Cave. 
on a puzzle that's near the town of Lovelock, Nevada. Mm -hmm. It was rediscovered by people looking for cattle, and they, they found it, and word got out that the cave was there. People that oh. mined guano, guano heard about it, so they, they uh, put in a bid for the right to mine this guano out of there. The guano is, is uh, essentially a bat poop. Uh, you know, it just built up over the years and years. And so they got in there and they began to dig it out. And they began to dig out artifacts. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they reported this to universities. And, and, and it just, uh, people began to come by and, and they just continued to dig and dig. And, until finally they exposed some mummies. And uh, these mummies were, like, pretty big. Uh, you might call them giants. Uh, some of them had uh, the remnants of hair. Uh, and, and that one I know was part of preserve. Right. Uh, so so uh, the, the reason for mining that one, a lot of people think fertilizer, per se. But that's really not what they were looking to do. They, uh, it's, uh, Potassium nitrate is the main ingredient of that guano, and it's also one of the main ingredients of gunpowder. Oh! Uh, so that was the primary reason for wanting to mine it, so that they could produce gunpowder with it. Uh, oh, wow! I had no idea! So back, back to the cave, uh, you know, they threw a lot of things out in front of the cave. Uh, I think they threw total there were 10,000 artifacts uh, but they were big money and uh, they're huge and so uh, you know there, it, it's been a controversial thing for years and years and, and occasionally somebody finds something whether on purpose or they stumble across it the addict uh, the, uh, they found a A skull and a sink just outside the cave, just maybe a mile or so away. And, and it was found uh, by the University of California at Berkeley. And they were, it was an old uh, camp, honey camp, and they were looking for artifacts and stuff. They had a, a, a tobacco out there. It wasn't anything being done tenderly. Uh, and so they, they piled up a whole bunch of dirt on one side and then they go off on hiatus and when they come back the next year it had rained enough to wash some of the dirt in that berm that they had left there and this skull was sticking out and this was really an oddball skull uh, uh when i found it uh the, the, the written information on it was unusual skull found near love lock in the back uh, it had a sagittal crest on it. The features were different from a regular skull. It had brow ridges, jutting jaw, and it had, uh, in the back of the neck, it had a bony, bony ridge that if you flushed it out, it would appear to have no neck. Hmm. And, and so that fit the description of what they gave for these red-haired giants. So, you know, things just begin to pop up that, that where you think, well, this is a fairy tale, but maybe not so much. Um, then, uh, uh, years later, uh, there's a museum in Winnemucca, in the past. It's called the Humboldt Museum. And uh, I've been there several times in over the years. And I've seen the skulls that they had down in the bottom of the basement. They kept hidden in the cabinet. Uh, I saw them once on uh, uh, the show in Canada. I think they were actually children from down there uh, and went down. But it, there was another skull that was in there with them that was gone by 1995. It, um, it came out of Love Lock Cage and it was all stained in uh, that one. Up. I think I, I, there should be one on the website, a picture of it. 
kind of dark colored. Yeah, yes, I'm looking at them as you're talking, actually. You know, maybe a third again larger than than the normal the skulls that were there with it, the Pai skull. Mm. And it had double rows of teeth on the top side, and it had overcrowded teeth on the bottom. And th it had this huge orbit in the for the eyes. That was just giant orbit. And it had an elongated skull uh, that was, you know, sometimes that's caused by, uh, by you know, cranial binding, uh, just a custom. And other times, it, it, you know, it, it's not that. It's something else. And so... Uh, let me ask you about that. Let me let me ask you about that real quick, if I can. Okay, the binding. All right. Did, now, did they really do that? And and if they did, was it to look like these other things that they'd seen before, and they wanted to try to look like them for some reason? I've heard that, but I really don't know what they wanted to look like. I I do know what they did look like, uh, and not all of them were were cranial bindings and they know that by the six features, you know, the the little uh the little cracks that, that they have, the, the growth plate and the top yeah. of the head that, that grow they grow solid when you get all be an adult, but uh as a child, as a little baby, they're soft and they're movable. Uh those things are not in position uh that they should be in. And that doesn't change whether you bind or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's something different. Uh, and, and these things uh, seem to have this, you know, dental uh, irregularity. Yeah. And over and over again, people report, you know, uh, a giant with double rows of teeth. I've heard it, read it. But this is an actual photo. And, and what you're seeing there is an actual photo that you may have never seen ever before because uh, it was taken by a friend of mine 40 plus years ago uh, down in the basement of this museum. And uh, he, he became friends with the, the lady that was running the museum, Miss Pansy Lee, a really nice and decent lady. And she told him about the red hair giant story. And then, you know, he he would go and and tell her, you know, a lot of the artifacts they had upstairs were where were they weren't sure exactly what they were, whether this was a pipe or a duck ball or or whether this stone with a cross on it was uh, something they used to determine direction or what way was. He would tell them. And and they got to be just bad friends and and so she took him down there and she let him look at this. And she went back upstairs and what she did not know was that he kept a, a disposable camera in his pocket everywhere he went. And he just snapshot, took snapshots of it. Did she know he did that? I mean, was she trying to avoid that? I, really, I, I don't know whether really she knows it or not, but I do know that the museum now denies ever having that story. Oh. Can you tell us who your friend was? Uh, yeah, Don Monroe. Don Monroe. Don Monroe. He's an adventurer of uh, the old style. Uh, he, he just travels and he's been to one adventure after another. He, he's a, just an insatiable curiosity, uh, old-fashioned, uh, you know, kind of a western cowboy type fellow that just uh, wants to know more. And he took my picture. I have the original. Uh, uh, I keep them in my face. Uh, well, are most people believing that the red-haired giants are what we know as Sasquatch? Or different? Uh, not sure. Not sure there. But I did find out some things. I, I paid a visit with the uh, Paiutes there uh, and the Rock the Lovelock Colony, and they told me some things, and uh, they, they said that these things came down the Humboldt River, and, and if you just look at a good letter from the Humboldt Humboldt River, backwards, it ends up in the Jarbidge 
wilderness. And the John Beach wilderness has the reports of the huge, gigantic Sasquatch-like creatures uh, that surrounded a, a bunch of elk hunters all night long. Uh, I mean, they thought they had brought the farm. And, uh, and, and then if you follow the Humboldt out of John Beach, downstream, you'll come by uh, another set of mountains, uh, the Ruby Mountains. Uh, not too far from Elko. And there, there again, in those mountains, there are reports of the same thing. Unusually large, when I say unusually large, unusually large even for that watch. These things would be very tall uh, and, and, and covered in hair. So it, it, it just seems to fit what they said about they came down the Humboldt River. Uh, and who knows what drove them out, whether there was a drought or, or something of that nature that made them leave those mountains uh, and come down the river. But they came down hungry because they began to eat the pie and that was, uh, they could not tolerate that. Yeah, I remember seeing like a documentary on what exactly what you're talking about. Because I remember going, how did they know they were cannibal, cannibalistic? And it was in the, right in the fire, I guess, they would see the bones, and they were chewed on and gnawed on. Well, the, 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 the Paiute said in their story, in their floor, they said that uh, they would dig holes in the trail at night and, and cover them over and make a trap. Oh. And when the Paiute was going down that trail uh, under the moonlight, wouldn't see it, step into it, and then they would be launched from these things. Um, so they, uh, they, 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 Paiutes had a name that they were called Numa Tecutta. Uh Tecutta means ears, and Numa means people. Uh, people eaters. They call themselves, the Pais call themselves Kuptikata, which means squirrel eaters. Uh, so they, they kind of get, your name came from whatever you were known to, to eat. Mm -hmm. um, so, so these things were people eaters. And they, even the Salish Indians they gave them a similar name and they call them Sitika. Sika comes from Sikutna, and Sit, or Sai, uh, it would mean something like people leaders, you know, uh, similar. Uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, what, what do you want to, I don't know how you view things like that, but it, it, to me it's kind of horrific if you were the Paiutes living there. Oh, absolutely. And, and it, it's kind of, stick with you as a story, you know. Yeah, absolutely, and stick to their ribs. Wow. We are talking with M.K. Davis. That was a terrible thing to say, but I had to do it there. We're talking with M.K. Davis, very well known for his in-depth photo journalism and analysis of many films, mm -hmm. the Patterson Sasquatch mm -hmm. film, as well, you know, the Patterson Gimlin film, as well as even the uh, Kennedy assassination and more. We're talking to him about peopling of America, and uh, we got more to come. M.K. Davis with us tonight, Connie Willis here, and you're listening to Coast to Coast AM. Cheerio, baby, it's the wild world. The Delta variant COVID-19 spread faster and more easily. Variants can be more contagious, aggressive, and deadly. But we know vaccines work. Vaccinated Californians have greater protection against serious illness, hospitalization, and death. We can help stop the spread and end this pandemic. Get vaccinated and wear a mask when it can protect you and others. Find a vaccine near you at myturn.ca.gov. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Anchor presents Bet You Didn't Know. 
Betsy didn't know that your car's transmission is made up of 800 pieces. Yeah. Also, Betsy didn't know that Amco sticks over 40 million transmissions, and that Amco offers a nation And Amco offers payment plan options for almost any credit oh. situation, so it's easier than ever to fix it fast and pay it off slow. That's Amco, double A, MCO. Shirt. Luckily, that's a little hobby of ours. Sure. The best way to get into trouble and cause a ruckus is to tell the truth. You know, first thing, you actually don't get much trouble for making things up. You get in trouble when you tell the truth. Johnny, we get to the truth. You can tell a comment. Like, you're supposed to be Fuck me. 